Uh, you know, just uh, I was really pleased with how we attacked today. Uh, you know, there was a level of you know certain energy through through drills that's impressive, and that's the thing about this group. You know, we we've been in resilient in games. You know, we haven't got all the results that we exactly want in every game, but there have been games where we did earn those results late, but it has to do with our resiliency. So to see the resiliency coming out today, you know, on a Tuesday, I mean, everyone, there was there was great energy, great spirit, great. Now, you got to carry that over into tomorrow and Thursday and Friday, and it all has to be earned, but I like the way we started in terms of where we are Monday, Tuesday. Did you get an idea on Saturday when you guys cut it to one touchdown there in the second half? That here we go again, we're going to make another comeback the way you guys had so many times? Absolutely. I believed. I believed at that point when we cut it to seven that we were going to win that ball game. You know, and it doesn't mean that it had gone perfect up to that point. There were a lot of things that, you know, that were maybe, you know, to our level, to our standard. Um, but still, at that point, absolutely. I believe that, uh, you know, we were going to get a stop. We were going to find a way to score again, and, and we were going to find a way to win that ball game. Um, you know, and unfortunately it didn't happen, and that's football. But I don't think it ever was a matter of uh, us not continuing to believe. They continue to do that, and that's what's allowed us to win games late in the fourth quarter. You know, against North Carolina, Weaver, against Ole Miss. We just have to, again, come back this week swinging and, and know that we have an incredible challenge coming up, but our guys are pumped for that. Coach Wilcox, in talking about the defense, was saying there wasn't really a common thread in, in the breakdown on Saturday. It was more little details on, on a play here or there. What was it like for the offense? Was it similar things that were going wrong, or, or was it little, little things that were going yeah, there are. I, I think there's a lot of common thread to that. We talked about that. Just certain technique things, you know, certain things technique-wise, certain things assignment-wise, in which we pointed out, hey, sometimes you're going to get beat in a one-on-one -on -one situation in football. Everyone does. Every team in America, you know, no matter how long you play, sometimes you're going to get beat. But a few times we felt like we got beat when it wasn't something that was, you know, that was done by a great player on the other side, but it was our technique or our misassignment. So that's what we have to clean. We own that. You know, that's our. Now, now they have great players. And I give them a lot of credit for the, you know, the way Oregon played and everything like that. So there were times where they beat us on plays, but there were other times, and they'd probably say the same thing on their side of the wall, that there are plays where you know it's it's their technique. So that's just something that you have to own the fact that hey, we take these to another level, you know, and, and we're at a different level than our opponent in terms of how we are, where we are, discipline-wise, technique-wise. That gives you an edge, and uh, and we have to find that edge. But it has to happen through the week of practice, and then guys, you know, we all have to just be able to carry that into Saturday. But but, uh, love this group. We really love the way they came out and worked today, and and uh, I, I believe they're gonna, you know, they're gonna make great improvements on that. Several teams commented about how hard the team played up through the USC game. Do you sense there was a little bit of a hangover about how tough that game was, where maybe the effort wasn't as 100% as it could have been in the second half when things started to go downhill? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't question. I don't. I don't think our effort, you know, ever took a slide. I mean, they made some plays. I'll give them that. You know, and there are certain things. I think it was more assignment-wise. You know, that, that you know, from an offensive standpoint, that's what I can speak on. But you know, so. But no, I never. Nothing felt settled. Like, no, I, I don't think anything. I think, like you said, we were in the fourth quarter and cut it to a one, you know, one-score game. So our guys were still fighting and scrapping, you know, all the way till the end. And uh, you got to give them credit. You know, they made, a, you know, they made more plays at the end and, and did some things well. But, uh, but in the end of the day, no, I, I feel like it was, it was again, you know, this group has been consistent with how they approach it, and I believe we're going to be consistent going into this week. Go, I mean, go out there swinging. You may have already been asked that. I was talking, talk, talking with Pat. Is there a way to figure out what's going on with the slow starts? I think in the first half you're being outscored by something like 40, yeah. 40 points or whatnot. Right is, is there is there a common theme that you found, or is it just no, execution? I don't think it's a common theme. I think it's just you know we gotta we just gotta play better early. You know we gotta execute better early. We gotta uh, you know and we have to you know be on be more on point technically sometimes. You know, and whenever, you know, and I know everyone around the country has certain injuries or certain things that happen, but when you go through those moments, you know, where you have a few guys down and other guys are stepping in, you just have to be that much more locked into the, you know, the smaller things. You can't get away with having a busted play and it just goes, you know, yeah. and, and we've all been around those situations where, whoa, that, that play didn't even look clean, but it still goes for 60. But you, you know, and those, those, those don't happen. You, you don't know? have a Demetrius who can do that, so you got to right. be a little but more. The, but, so we, but we got to own that and say, what can we do then to mm -hmm. start faster? Well, here's what we can do. We can, again, I, if you look back at last week, we started pretty fast against USC. I mean, we were mm -hmm. all the way down into the, you know, in, inside the red zone. We missed on a third and five, ended up kicking a field goal. So I don't think it's necessarily something that's all the time or this or that. It's just we just haven't consistently put back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back drives together. 
that's the thing I noticed more than anything. Sometimes we'll start fast and then we'll have started fast against Weaver, but then we'll have three drives where we don't go. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the biggest thing for us is being able to stack drives together. And that's something that we gotta, again, you just gotta be disciplined and you gotta continue to uh, work every series to know that, yeah, whatever we did there, good or bad, we gotta come back. So when we've had those good drives, we gotta stack another good drive on top of it. Another good drive on top of that. And it uh, just comes down to details. Uh, Ross got knocked around a bit uh, on Saturday. Do you feel like he's kind of, I don't, I, I know he's got hit in a lot of different games, but do you feel like he's kind of growing with taking these hits and improving from week to week? Oh yeah, I mean he's, he's yeah, he's gotten hit every week, you know, and, and all QBs do to some extent, you know, that's just the nature of it, and it's, uh, you know, it's a challenging position that way. I, I think he's, He's handled that part, you know, like I said, that's something you don't know until he plays. You know, I don't know that in the spring, how that's gonna be. I don't know that through fall camp, because we don't go live. So he's answered that question on how he's gonna handle those things. There's plenty of things, just like all, you know, all our guys that we have to work on, but one thing that he's shown is uh, he, can, he can handle getting hit in the mouth and come back swinging the next play, the next series, whatever it might be. So you really respect that and appreciate that about the way Ross plays the game. Last week, Coach Greatwood said, hey, if, if Safel had been healthier, we would have played him you know, right out of the rip. Uh, what did you see out of him last year, particularly at, at the end of the game there? Uh, he's doing some really good things. I mean, obviously, it's, he's a true freshman. He's a true freshman that didn't get to play early in the year. You know, and miss some of camp, so it's it's tough. You know, it's even harder on him than your average true freshman. Just the number of reps he's had since you know August first or whatever it was exactly that we started. So, um, but where he is, I love him. You know, I love the way, he, like I said, he competes. I love the way. You know, if he, if he does make a mistake, he makes it full speed and he makes it caring about it. He makes it, he, when it happens, he wants to fix it. You know, going into the next play. So, yeah, he's. Uh, He's, he's great to have, great addition to come back. Do you envision him continuing to have a larger and larger role maybe as the year goes on? Sure, we need all hands on deck, you know, and he will. You know, I'm serious, you know, all those guys are going to have a role. You know, just like, you know, our tailback position, O-line, receivers, I mean, we all have to be ready to go. It's going to take all of us, and uh, they're ready for that, you know, and they're competing. All the guys that I've talked to seem to have a, a, a Tory story about, the, about Coach Becton. Do you have any anything that you've observed I don't know. No, I mean he's great, man. I mean, uh, you know, I, I mean, yeah. There's probably a ton of stories, but they've probably already told him. But uh, yeah, he's he. I'll tell you what. He doesn't he doesn't let anything distract him or anything when he's in his mindset and his time to do his job. That's what I, I remember once being out here at six in the morning, and it was like there was I don't know turkeys being slaughtered up there or something. I mean, I was here, you know. So normally you're thinking that's gonna kind of take you. I mean, it was weird sounding stuff up on the hillside. I swear, to you. and I hadn't, you know, I'd only been here a month, but I mean, it was business. Get your mind on what we're doing down, you know, because all the kids, you know, you're gonna naturally. I was. I was like, what is that? But he did. He locked in. So that's one thing. That's a Tory man. He, I just like, man, this guy. It, it get have bombs going on around him. He's gonna, he's gonna stay dialed into what the hell's going on there. Was that like the winter condition? Like that when was you guys winter condition. Yeah, it was six in the morning out here. It was a combination of turkeys going crazy, or getting killed, and people yelling down because they don't like the noise. And, and, and Tory was just, he wasn't gonna let our guys, you know, shift from what they were doing on the field. It was good. There are a lot of turkeys and peacocks yeah. around here. Yeah. Oh yeah. I see them in my driveway all the time. So what you're saying is he's big on excuses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he likes excuses. Yeah, Tori, you know, just tell me why you couldn't do that, please. <laughs> Give us an idea about the, the Washington defense. What, what makes them so good? Uh, I just think they're, well, there's a number of things. I mean, when you look at them, first off, they're, there's talented players. But a lot of people around the country have talent. They, I mean, they maximize their talent. I mean, their talented players work. They work hard. You can tell they're strong. So they do things in the offseason. They're technically sound. They get themselves in position. You know, they're a very great tackling defense. You know, so, you know, whatever else they're doing well, sometimes you think, you know, well, tackling's just kind of tackling. You either can or you can't. Well, they, 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 you can tell there's a there's a way they go about it, and, and they do it, and they tackle as a team. So it's just, you know, it's, it's fun to watch them because you respect how they play the game and just, uh, you know, what they're doing on defense. So, but you also get excited about that. I get excited about that, you know, because to me that becomes a challenge where, yeah, let's go. Let's go after it and let's see, you know, what they got, you know, bringing their best, which is very good. And we're going to bring our best and, and let's, let's go after this thing. How similar are they to when you played them last at Eastern Washington? There's some similarities, but they're, again, they're deeper into it together, you know. So that was game three with 
Coach Pete, I think. You know, that was 2014, and, and he just got there. So that was just game three. So they're just deeper into it. So they're polished on everything. They had talented guys that year. I mean, they had, I think, three first-rounders. So there were some guys running around. But you can tell now they even play that much more as a team. You know, just there's so there's that talent that's out there, but they just, you know, that's a sign of being well coached, being disciplined, all that stuff, and you know, growing within that program. So, had you heard of Coach uh, Coach Beckton at that point? Because I mean, he was that was kind of his, the tail end of his his time there. With I, I had, I had, okay. you know, and he was someone. No, he was someone I met here for the first time. Okay. You know, and I heard about him from the coach here. So no, okay. I had. All right, thank, all right, thank, thank you. you, thank you, sir.